air and atmosphere composition of air air present in the atmosphere is a mixture of gases these gases do not combine chemically hence their presence in air can be proved through various chemical tests based on the properties of individual gases since time immemorial man knows that air is needed for the survival of all living beings it was the discovery of oxygen by joseph prestley in 1774 that gave an idea to other scientists that air consists of more than one gas a sample of pure air contains gases presence in air in percentage nitrogen 78.03% oxygen 20.9% carbon dioxide 0.03% noble gases 0.94% water vapor variable carbon dioxide was first prepared in 1775 by joseph black it was named acid carbonique by antoine lavoisier it acquired its present name by the modern system of nomenclature like oxygen carbon dioxide is present in both air and water however most of co2 is present in combined state that is as carbonates and bicarbonates both inside and outside the sea all sea shells are chemically calcium carbonate similarly marble is also known as calcium carbonate co2 is naturally added to the atmosphere by breathing natural fires and volcanic eruptions antoine in lavoisier antoine lavoisier 1743 to 1794 is most noted for his discovery of the role oxygen plays in combustion lavoisier recognized and named oxygen 1778 and hydrogen 1783 He wrote the first extensive list of elements and helped to reform chemical nomenclature. Uses of oxygen. Oxygen has numerous uses. Its uses can be classified into three categories: artificial respiration. Since man's body is not suited to breathe in oxygen dissolved in water, therefore Deep sea divers and people moving in submarines carry oxygen with them for breathing. At high altitude, air contains less oxygen, hence mountaineers also carry oxygen cylinders on their back. Spaceships also carry their own supply of oxygen as there is no air in space. Medical Sometimes people suffering from respiratory problems asthma bronchitis are not able to breathe on their own they have to be given oxygen under the supervision of a doctor industrial use oxyhydrogen flame is used for cutting and welding of metals oxyacetylene flame is also used for the same purpose it generates a very high temperature liquid oxygen lox is used in combination with a fuel as liquid propellants in the rocket engines of space vehicles oxygen is needed for combustion oxygen is a supporter of combustion but it is not combustible It means that a substance will continue to burn in an atmosphere of oxygen but unlike hydrogen oxygen will not catch fire and burn Metals and non-metals burn in an atmosphere of oxygen forming compounds 
called oxides. These oxides are generally acidic, turn blue litmus red, or basic, turn red litmus blue. The combination of an element with oxygen is called oxidation. Oxidation is generally accompanied with the evolution of heat and light. Activity Take one hold cogged test tube of oxygen and insert a jet tube through the hole. Bring a lighted taper near the jet tube. It is observed that oxygen does not burn at the mouth of jet tube. It is thus concluded that oxygen is not combustible. Uses of Carbon Dioxide Uses of all chemicals are based on their physical and chemical properties. CO2 is put to following uses. Carbon dioxide is fairly soluble in water. Hence, it is used in making aerated drinks like cold drinks or even plain soda. Solid CO2 or dry ice is used in refrigeration. It is superior refrigerant than common ice because it can produce very low temperatures and does not form liquid on melting. Urea is manufactured when ammonia reacts with CO2 at a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius and 150 atmosphere pressure. Urea is a very important nitrogenous fertilizer. Carbon dioxide is neither combustible nor supports combustion. This property of CO2 makes it very useful in fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are of different types, depending upon the fire they have to put out. Liquid CO2 is used in some, while in most cases, CO2 is generated at the time of extinguishing fire. Greenhouse Effect CO2 is used by plants to manufacture their food, that is, glucose, by the process of photosynthesis. In fact, excess CO2 from the air can be removed by planting more trees. Excess of CO2 along with other gases in the air causes greenhouse effect. Greenhouse effect derives its name from the role of the glass panels in greenhouse. These glass panels allow long-wave radiation of the sun rays to come in, but trap the black radiation, causing the rise of temperature in greenhouse. Increased quantity of CO2 along with N2O, nitrous oxide, CH4, methane, O3, ozone and CFC, chlorofluorocarbon, allow the earth to heat up. This is important because without these greenhouse gases forming a blanket in this way, the earth would be almost 35 degrees Celsius cooler than it is today. Greenhouse effect could lead to melting of polar ice caps, thus raising the sea level and flooding of low-lying coastal plains. We can counteract greenhouse effect by stopping deforestation, cutting down of forests, and through afforestation, planting more trees. Plants will remove CO2 from atmosphere and thus reduce its effect. Renewal of Carbon Dioxide in Nature Plants take carbon dioxide from the air. They use this to form energy-rich carbohydrates through the process of photosynthesis. During respiration, this energy is used by living beings which feed on plants. Carbon dioxide, water and energy are produced as the byproducts of respiration. 
dead bodies of plants and animals on decomposing liberate carbon dioxide. Combustion of fuels also result in the release of carbon dioxide in the environment, which is termed as the carbon dioxide cycle or carbon cycle. Uses of Nitrogen Being chemically inert, it is used for filling food packages to keep the food fresh. To prevent fire, it is also used for filling spaces in oil tanks. Atmospheric nitrogen is used to manufacture ammonia, which has a large number of industrial uses. Some explosives like nitroglycerine, dynamite, trinitrotoluene, TNT, gunpowder contain nitrogen. These are prepared by using nitric acid. It is used in the manufacture of urea, which is a very important nitrogenous fertilizer. As liquid nitrogen has a very low boiling point, it is used to preserve blood, corneas and other donated body organs. Fact Dinitrogen oxide is a sweet-smelling gas used as an anesthetic. It is called laughing gas because it makes some patients laugh before and after they are unconscious. Importance of Nitrogen for Plants Plants get nitrogen in the following ways. Soil receives nitric acid coming down with rainwater. Nitric acid gets converted into nitrate salts in the soil. Plants convert these nitrates into proteins and other nitrogenous compounds with the help of certain bacteria. Leguminous plants like beans, peas, and pulses have certain bacteria living in their roots. These bacteria help to convert atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogenous compounds that plants can use. We depend on plants for protein and nucleic acids. Proteins are responsible for the growth of our muscles, blood cells, hair, nails, etc. Nucleic acid plays an important role in reproduction and heredity. Nitrogen Cycle When the dead bodies of plants and animals decay, the nitrogenous compounds find their way back to the soil. Animal wastes also contain nitrogenous compounds. There are bacteria in the soil that convert these nitrogenous compounds into atmospheric nitrogen. This cyclic process of nitrogen being fixed, used by plants, animals and humans, and then its return to the atmosphere, constitutes nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen in air, bacteria, lightning and water, bacteria, nitrates, decay, plants, animals, decay and excretion. Inert Gases A group of gases called inert gases are also present in air, 0.94%. These gases are six in numbers, namely helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon. Although radon is not present in air as it is radioactive. Since these gases are almost unreactive, they are called inert or noble gases. Unlike other atmospheric gases, they do not have special use for animals and plants. Once they are isolated from air, they are put to various industrial uses. Helium It is used as gas in airships 
and weather balloons. Helium is mixed with O2 to inhale during deep sea diving. Neon Neon is used in photography and also in fluorescent tubes along with other inert gases. Argon It is used for filling electric bulbs. Krypton It is used in quick photography and also used in electric tubes to test leakage of voltage. Xenon It acts as an anesthetic and is used in arc lamps. Water vapor The percentage of water vapor varies from 0.4 to 4%. In summer, clothes dry faster as compared to rainy season. This is because in summer, percentage of water vapor is very low in air. Hence, water evaporates faster from clothes, making them dry. In rainy season, air is cool due to high percentage of water vapor in it. As a result, evaporation of water from clothes occurs slowly and clothes take a longer time to dry. Water Vapor and Climatic Conditions It rains more in coastal region than in deserts. Similarly, coastal regions have moderate climate. Have you wondered why? Evaporation of water from sea causes water content of air to increase. This increased humidity often results in precipitation, that is, rain. Depending upon the temperature, the water vapor produces snow, fog, mist, hail, and other phenomenon. Water evaporates from our body also. We sweat more in summers to keep ourselves cool. Water lost, thus, it is regained by our body by causing the sensation of thirst. We drink water to quench our thirst and thus lost water is regained. We have to water plants twice a day during summers. Plants also lose water by way of evaporation. Nature maintains the balance of water by means of water cycle. Air Pollution The amount of moisture and dust particles present in air varies with place and season. Noble gases are present in air in very small amounts. Nature, through its own activities, maintains this percentage, composition, but man's greed and uncaring attitude has caused this balance to get disturbed. The process of addition of components to the air is called air pollution, while the components are called pollutants. Major polluting gases present in air are Sulfur dioxide, SO2 Nitrogen dioxide, NO2 Hydrogen sulfide, H2S Carbon monoxide CO Chlorofluorocarbons CFCs Particulate matter Particles in air Dust particles Smoke particles Harm caused by pollutants Sulfur dioxide SO2 gets added to the air due to volcanic activities Natural process and by burning of coal. Sulfur dioxide, SO2 gas, has a pungent, suffocating odor. Hence, it harms respiratory system. It combines with the oxygen of air during rains to form sulfuric acid. Rainwater mixed with sulfuric acid results in acid rain, which causes harm to monuments. Nitrogen dioxide, NO2, is released from vehicular exhaust and burning of coal. 
NO2 reacts with water vapor to produce nitrous and nitric acids, which cause acid rain. Other nitrogen oxides mix with fog to form harmful smog. Carbon monoxide, CO, is released due to incomplete combustion of fuels. It is also called silent killer as it is the most dangerous pollutant. It combines with hemoglobin of blood, thus prevents hemoglobin from carrying oxygen, is highly toxic to human beings, headache, dizziness and even death. Hydrogen sulphide, H2S gas, is not only produced as a byproduct by many industrial processes and burning of fossil fuel, but also by natural sources. Hydrogen sulphide, H2S. Hydrocarbons are compounds of carbon and hydrogen, which are released in atmosphere by natural process like forest fire and also from industrial emissions. Hydrocarbons by themselves have no harmful effect. They undergo chemical reactions forming toxic compounds harmful to man as well as plants and animals. Chlorofluoromethanes called chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, widely used as propellants and refrigerants, escape in air. When they reach upper sphere of atmosphere, they cause damage to ozone layer. As a result, more harmful ultraviolet rays reach the Earth's surface. Exposure to ultraviolet radiations can lead to cancer. Dust and smoke Dust released by natural disintegration of rocks and smoke produced by burning of organic matter cause respiratory problems like asthma and bronchitis. They reduce visibility and blacken buildings and monuments. Air Pollution Control The control of air pollution is done in two ways. Control at source and control of dispersal. As industry is a major contributor of pollutants, use of modern techniques for reducing emission of gases is undertaken. Processes like absorption of harmful gases by suitable chemicals, adsorption using charcoal and silica gel, use of electric precipitator to check emission of soot and converting harmful compounds to harmless chemicals are used for reducing emission. Automobile emission can be checked by installing a device called catalytic converter. It converts unburned hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide gas into harmless water vapor and carbon dioxide gas. Government has made stringent laws to check pollution. The drive of Delhi government for shifting industrial sites to safer places, ban on plying of those vehicles which were not using CNG, compressed natural gas, as fuel is known to all. Earlier use of catalytic converter in vehicle to check emission of hydrocarbons was also made compulsory. When you go to petrol pumps, you must have noticed the sign of unleaded petrol on filling tanks. This is done to reduce emission of lead compounds in atmosphere. Do you know? Many industrial processes use gases from the air. Oxygen is used in the production of steel and in welding. Nitrogen is used to make ammonia. Oxygen Oxygen is the most abundant element on the earth. It occurs in free state in air and in combined state as water, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, carbonates, oxides, 
etc. It was discovered by Joseph Presley, but named by Antoine Lavoisier. It exists as a diatomic molecule O2 and its molecular weight is 32. Its presence in air makes life possible on Earth. As all forms of life need oxygen for respiration. Things burn because of oxygen as it supports burning. Methods for preparation of oxygen Laboratory preparation of oxygen Oxygen can be prepared in the laboratory by the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide using manganese dioxide as catalyst. Let us perform an activity to see the preparation of oxygen. Test for Oxygen Oxygen is a colorless and odorless gas, but this property of oxygen cannot be used as a test for oxygen. This is because nitrogen and carbon dioxide, which are also present in the air, are colorless and odorless. Therefore, some specific tests are employed to know that the gas evolved by heating KNO3, KClO3, HGO, etc. is oxygen. These tests are If a glowing splinter is brought near oxygen, it bursts into flames. When oxygen is passed through a colorless alkaline pyrogalol solution, it turns brown. When nitric oxide Another colorless gas is mixed with oxygen. Reddish-brown fumes are formed. Activity Take manganese dioxide in a conical flask. Fix a two-hold stopper on the mouth of the conical flask. Pass a dropping funnel through one of the hole and a delivery tube through the other hole. The other end of the delivery tube should go into the beehive shelf placed in a water trough. Let small quantity of hydrogen peroxide drip through the funnel so that it mixes with manganese dioxide. What do you see? You will find that oxygen gas evolves. Allow the oxygen gas to pass through the delivery tube. Invert a gas jar filled with water over the beehive shelf. Wait for a few minutes and you will find that the level of water in the jar goes down and oxygen gas takes up the space above water. When all the water in the jar has been displaced, cover the jar and remove it from beehive shelf. This gas jar is full of oxygen gas. 2H2O2, manganese oxide, gives 2H2O plus O2 gas. Did you notice that MnO2 was written over the arrow and not with H2O2? Why? This is because MnO2 remains unchanged in the reaction. Its presence increases the rate of decomposition of H2O2. Hence, MnO2 is called a catalyst. A catalyst alters, increases or decreases the rate of a chemical reaction without participating in it. Do you know? Have you ever thought that if atmospheric gases would have had characteristic odor and taste, how difficult it would have been for us to live on this planet? Properties of Oxygen Physical Properties Oxygen is a colorless and odorless gas. It is slightly heavier than air. It is slightly soluble in water. It is neutral in nature, which means it is neither acidic nor basic. Chemical Properties Reaction of oxygen with metals and non-metals 
burning of coal, wood, coke, etc. produces carbon dioxide, CO2, which turns moist blue litmus slightly red. A very special test of this gas is that when passed through colorless lime water, it turns lime water milky. C plus O2, when heated, gives CO2. Sulfur burns with a blue flame in oxygen, forming SO2. SO2 has a pungent suffocating odor. It also turns moist blue litmus red. S plus O2 gives SO2. Phosphorus catches fire in an atmosphere of oxygen, forming dense white fumes of phosphorus pentoxide, P2O5. The fumes on condensing form a white solid. 4P plus 5O2 gives 2 P2O5. Phosphorus is stored by keeping it in a tube of water. It does not react with water but catches fire when exposed to air. Atmospheric nitrogen combines with oxygen when there is thunder and lightning. Due to lightning, high temperature is reached which causes formation of NO. N2 plus O2 on 3000 degrees Celsius, thunder and lightning gives 2 NO. Sodium is a metal and its combustion with oxygen is so vigorous that it catches fire in air. It also reacts explosively with water. Sodium is stored under kerosene to keep it out of touch with air as well as water. It burns in oxygen with a golden yellow flame. 4Na plus O2 gives 2Na2O. Magnesium also burns in oxygen with dazzling white light and dense white fumes. Dense white fumes on condensing give a white powder, magnesium oxide. 2Mg plus O2 gives 2MgO. During Deepavali, you get magnesium coated sticks called fuljari. When it is lighted, it gives bright light. Calcium reacts with oxygen to form calcium oxide. Calcium oxide is commonly called quick lime. 2Ca plus O2 gives 2CaO. Combustion Burning is a fast oxidation process generally accompanied with evolution of heat and light. In common terms, Burning is connected to a reaction where a compound on oxidation usually produces CO2 and H2O. Conditions Necessary for Combustion There are three conditions which are necessary for combustion to take place. Presence of Combustible Substance The presence of combustible substance is necessary for combustion to take place. Presence of supporter of combustion The most common supporter of combustion which we have around us is air. When burning charcoal is covered with a vessel, it stops burning after some time. Actually, when we cover the burning charcoal with a vessel, the supply of oxygen is cut off and hence the charcoal fire stops. When the clothes of person catch fire, the person is covered with a blanket to extinguish the fire because the supply of air to the burning clothes is cut off due to which the clothes stop burning. Ignition Temperature The lowest temperature at which a substance catches fire and starts burning is called Ignition temperature. It is necessary to heat a combustible substance to its ignition temperature so that it may undergo combustion. The ignition temperature of paper 
is 233 degrees Celsius. That means that a paper has to be heated to at least to a temperature of 233 degrees Celsius so that it may catch fire and start burning. A piece of paper does not catch fire at room temperature. Respiration Respiration is an energy releasing process in which glucose is oxidized with the help of oxygen and the breakdown of glucose releases the energy. C6H12O6 plus 6O2 gives 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus energy. In animals, there are special organs for respiration and in plants, gaseous exchange occurs by diffusion. Respiration gives us energy and maintains our body temperature. Comparison between respiration and combustion Respiration Combustion Respiration is the process of oxidation of food materials like glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, to water and carbon dioxide. Combustion is the process of burning sugar to form water and carbon dioxide, which helps in the release of energy in the form of heat. Respiration does not require any external heat to carry on the process. Combustion is only done by applying external heat to the sugar molecule to burn. In respiration, there is no charring of sugar occurs during oxidation of sugar. In combustion, the sugar melts, chars and later burns to produce flame. In respiration, energy is released in several stages throughout the process. In combustion, Energy is released only once. The energy released from respiration is in the form of ATP and heat. The energy released from combustion is in the form of heat. Several intermediary products are formed during the process of respiration. No intermediary products are formed during the process of combustion. Respiration is of two types aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. The combustion is also called as process of rapid oxidation. Both respiration and combustion require oxygen and both produce rusting. Articles made of iron have to be protected with paint, grease, etc or else a brown layer is formed on them which destroys iron. This layer is of a substance called rust. The process of formation of this layer is called rusting. Rust is an oxide of iron. Therefore, rusting is also an example of oxidation reaction. Rusting is a slow oxidation process by which iron is converted into hydrated ferric oxide in the presence of moisture and air. Rust is non-sticky in nature, so it keeps peeling off. When a layer of rust peels off, it exposes next layer of iron, which now rusts. It is very important to protect iron from rusting. This prevention is carried out in different ways depending upon the use to which iron is put. Conditions necessary for rusting You have already seen in the previous chapter that presence of air and moisture are necessary for rusting of iron. Comparison between combustion and rusting Rusting and combustion are two different chemical processes. Let us define them both from which we may understand their differences and similarities. Rusting It is a chemical reaction when a metal, in most cases iron, reacts with moisture 
water vapor and oxygen to convert into a metal oxide example iron oxide rusting is a natural phenomenon that means it does not require any external force to get initiated in general rusting is an unfavorable reaction since it leads to corrosion of the surface reducing the life of the components combustion it is also a chemical reaction involving a fuel any combustible substance and oxygen it releases enormous amount of heat energy combustion can be both natural uncontrolled combustion leading to explosion and artificial controlled combustion for useful purposes rusting combustion chemical reaction chemical reaction slow fast and spontaneous releases very little or negligible energy releases large amount of energy unproductive leads to corrosion of metals used for productive work as in cooking and heat engines requires oxygen and moisture requires oxygen and combustible substance occurs at room temperature occurs only when ignition temperature is reached higher than room temperature like rusting of iron many other metals are prone to corrosion such as copper silver and even aluminum